Hey Ape Scholars, in this video I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about the 2025 AP Environmental Science exam. By the end of this video you'll know the exact format of the exam, you'll have an individualized study plan to maximize the effectiveness of your review time, and you'll leave with some in-test tips and strategies you can use to earn the exam score that you want. The first thing you need to know is that this is the first year of a fully digital MCQ and FRQ Apes exam. This year's exam is on May 13th at 12 p.m. local time and you'll be taking it on the College Board's Blue Book application. But before we get into the structure and strategy of the exam, we need to know what's on the exam. In section one, you'll have 90 minutes to answer 80 MCQs. And we even know the unit and skill breakdown of these 80 multiple choice questions. Units one and two will each make up six to 8% of the exam. Units seven and eight will each make up seven to 10% of the exam. Units three through six will be 10 to 15% each. And unit nine will be 15 to 20% of the exam. We can also see a skill breakdown here. And the key thing to notice is that the majority of section one comes down to concept explanation and environmental solutions. Now onto the FRQ section of the exam where we have even more clarity about the structure. After a 10 minute break between sections, you'll have 70 minutes to answer three FRQs, each worth 10 points. And we also know that environmental problems and solutions and math will make up close to half of these 30 FRQ points. Next, we'll take an in-depth look at the structure of each of these three FRQs that you can expect to see on section two. We know that question one will involve an experiment or scientific investigation, and that four to five of the 10 points will directly relate to that experiment. You'll most likely have to identify a scientific question or a hypothesis and possibly the variables, groups, or constants for the experiment. You'll probably also be asked why the researchers did something that they did in the study and how the results might differ if they were repeated under different conditions. Question two will focus on an environmental problem and it will probably include some sort of stimulus like a graph or map. There will be a couple easy identify points related to that stimulus and then there will be a few questions related to a possible solution to the environmental problem. Now you should also be prepared to give an unintended consequence or an additional benefit of the solution that you proposed. And question three will focus on a set of calculations, most likely three related math problems, each worth two points, one for the correct setup and one for the correct answer. Now that we've covered the structure of the exam, let's talk about how to study. In a class like APES with nine units and 99 topics, it's not practical for most students to have enough time to review every single piece of information that'll be on the exam. And the good news is if you did a decent job taking notes and being engaged in class, you probably don't need to review every single topic. That's where the individualized study plan that I put together comes into play. If you click the link in the video description below, you can sign up for a free preview of the ultimate review packet or the ultimate exam slayer and grab yourself a copy of this individualized study plan and the two week pacing schedule that goes with it. Now, I'm not gonna go over exactly how to use that individualized study plan in this video because there's a five minute breakdown of the plan inside both the ultimate review packet and the ultimate exam slayer but I will give you some tips on how to maximize the effectiveness of your study time. The first tip is gonna be about how to study, and the second tip is gonna be about what to study. In terms of how to study, the research is incredibly clear that you need to do what cognitive scientists call active recall or retrieval practice, or what you might already know as self-quizzing. This means reviewing some resource like a YouTube video, the ultimate review packet unit summary video, your notes, or your textbook, then trying to answer open-ended questions about what you just reviewed or try summarizing the information in your own words from memory. And then of course, checking to see if you accurately recall the information or if you need to correct your answer. Now the key step that a lot of students overlook with retrieval practice is not actually putting away that source of information and truly answering the questions from memory. That's why I added a detailed step-by-step -step retrieval practice guide to each of the ultimate review packet study guides this year. And what's nice about using the ultimate review packet for your retrieval practice is that all of the study guides are written in this retrieval practice style with FRQ task verbs in each question. So you're really practicing content recall and FRQ writing skills at the same time. And of course, they all come with answer keys so you can quickly check to see if you're accurately recalling the information or if you need to review a concept. Even if you're using a different source of retrieval practice questions like a study guide from your teacher, you can still print off this retrieval practice checklist guide to make sure that you're studying the most effective way. Now let's talk about what to study. If you have time to take a practice MCQ test and write a set of three released exam FRQs, you should totally do that and then fill out the individualized study plan so you can focus on your weakest units and your weakest FRQ types. But if you're down to a week or less, you probably just wanna direct your studying at the units that are gonna be most heavily covered on the exam. If you grab this 15 day study plan from the free preview of the URP or the UES, 
and skip ahead to day 13, you can start reviewing a unit a day in the order of importance on the exam. Obviously, you wanna start with unit nine since it's 15 to 20% of the exam. And the other nice thing about unit nine is it contains a lot of environmental solutions which make up a big portion of both the MCQ and FRQ section from a skill standpoint. Then you wanna move on to unit five because it's 10 to 15% of the exam and it just keeps showing up on the FRQ section year after year. Both FRQ sets from each of the last four years of exams have had at least a couple of questions from unit five. And like unit nine, unit five also has a ton of environmental solutions that will come up on the MCQ and especially the FRQ section of the exam. After that, I would just keep reviewing a unit or two a day in the order of exam waiting. And unfortunately, no study advice about the APES exam would be complete without talking about math. Luckily, I have a 20 minute review video that breaks down all of the types of calculations that you might need to do on the FRQ section of the exam. And I've linked that video in the description below. All right, now that we've covered the structure of the exam and how and what to study for the exam, let's talk about some specific in-test tips and strategies that you can use. We'll start with the multiple choice portion of the test. First, you wanna be aware that your pacing needs to be about one minute per question. If you find yourself taking much longer than this on a question, consider using the mark for review feature and coming back to it later. And this is especially useful because a lot of questions will take you less than a minute and will be really easy so they can boost your confidence and free up more time for those tougher questions. The second tip is to start to break questions down into two categories, simple answer option questions and compound answer option questions. Simple answer option questions have answers that really only consist of one part. Think of them as the identify or propose a solution version of FRQ. There's not much to analyze here. You either know these or you don't know them. So I would try to answer these questions more quickly and I wouldn't really recommend marking them for review. It's not likely that you're going to recall a simple singular fact later if you can't recall it now. You wanna save that extra time for compound answer option questions that require you to decide if numerous clauses or parts of an answer are all true and are all directly linked to the question. To do this, I teach my students a version of process of elimination called what's wrong with this answer. For each part of an answer, ask yourself two key questions. Is this part of the answer factually correct? And is this related to the question? If you're not sure of how to answer a question, this process can at least help you pick the answer that you can't find a clear inaccuracy or irrelevancy in. And the second part of this advice is an APES exam specific tip that I really wanna highlight. Especially on questions about graphs or environmental solutions or diagrams, often one of the best distractor answers will be factually correct, but it won't be related to the actual question that's being asked. To avoid picking these strong distractors, I have two different pieces of advice. The first is using the highlight feature to remind you of the key phrase or focal point in a question. And the second option is to just kind of repeat back in your mind that key phrase over and over again as you read the answer options, if that works for you and your thought process. Now on the FRQ section of the exam, strategy is even more important. The single biggest piece of advice I have here is to answer all of the easiest questions first. Every FRQ has two to three points that are really easy if you take your time. And you wanna answer these questions first while you're mentally fresh. Then you can move on to the more difficult describe and explain and calculate prompts in the order that you're most confident. And it's totally fine to skip a few questions on each FRQ. In fact, this can be a really strong strategy because every FRQ has one to two points that us exam graders call unicorn points. Some years I might grade close to 2000 students FRQs and only see 10 to 20 unicorn points awarded over that whole week of grading. So skipping those really tough, difficult to earn questions can free up more time to answer the easier questions. The final piece of FRQ advice I have is to read every question twice and then highlight the key phrase in the FRQ that your answer needs to connect to. So often scholars give factually correct but irrelevant answers to FRQs because they rush and they don't specifically address the prompt. If you want a series of videos that walks you through exactly how to do this for each of the three different types of FRQs on the exam, you can check out the How to Write AP Environmental Science Exam FRQs playlist linked in the upper right-hand corner of the screen and in the video description below. All right, Ape Scholars, that's your complete rundown of the 2025 Digital AP Environmental Science Exam. Remember, if you want a free copy of this individualized study plan and the two-week pacing guide that goes with it, click that link in the video description below to sign up for a free preview of the Ultimate Review Packet or the Ultimate Exam Slayer. And if you wanna to come to live stream review sessions where I'll be covering all nine units as well as MCQ and FRQ tips, make sure to check those out Sunday and Monday night, May 11th and May 12th from 8 to 9.30 p.m. Eastern. And as a thank you to students who support my work with the Ultimate Review Packet and the Ultimate Exam Slayer, I'll be doing an exclusive live stream review from 9.30 to 10 both nights so you can get your questions answered before that exam on Tuesday. As always, think like a mountain, 
and write like a scholar. 